Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, we started it a year ago. Uh, in January, we started a, a, a word called fasting, okay? It's a time of fasting. And so say that with me, fasting. Okay, uh, I, and, and it, it's really a misnomer because fasting is never fast. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's always slow because it's, uh, it's a time where we, we give God, we give up something in our life, and, and usually it's food, uh, but we want to do 21 days, okay? And so on the 7th of January, which would be this coming Thursday, we're going to start our fast, and then we'll conclude our fast on the 28th of the month. And so... Uh, I'm not going to ask you to have a no food type of fast, okay? Yeah, although I would, I would ask you to at least try to maybe go a day here and there throughout this, uh, these uh, 21 days. Um, there are, there are uh, different ways you can fast. And uh, uh, the word, when you look up in a dictionary, the word fasting, it means abstain from all or some kinds of food or drink, okay? But, but the, just say abstain with me, abstain abstain. That means do not partake, okay? That means don't, don't do something, okay? And so sometimes uh, if you could take 21 days and you could say, look, I'm, I'm just not going to watch TV for 21 days. What would your life look like if you didn't watch TV? I'm a, it, just do, do a little personal inventory, like how many hours a day do you spend watching TV? One hour, two hours, three hours? Some people come home from work to turn on TV and they never get up till 11 o'clock at night, so they spend five, six hours a day on TV alone. So what if you just turn the TV off and said, you know what, instead of watching TV, I'm going to spend more time with God, and I'm going to be more intentional with my time. I'm going to grow in God, okay? And so that's what these 21 days is really about. It's about, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, <laughs> maybe it's uh, you know, I'm not going to drink a Diet Coke, okay, for the next uh, t uh, 21 days. Maybe I'm not going to uh, uh, eat pizza, <laughs> Maybe I'm not going to, uh, I, I don't know, you, you, you pick it, okay? But I want you to take an intentionally set time away. And so that, you know, when you have that craving for that thing that you always want, I used to drink uh, Pepsi all the time. I would drink uh, uh, between six and 12 cans of Pepsi every day. And I remember one day when I decided I was going to quit drinking Pepsi, okay? I was like, that's it, I'm done. And so I, I just like, I stopped drinking Pepsi that one day. And I was like, and so when I would walk by the Pepsi machine, I'd be like, oh, you know. <laughs> and, so, and so it's like, uh, you know, I, and, and still today, I, lo I love, I love to have a Pepsi because uh, it's not the real thing, Pepsi. No, a, no I'm just, because <laughs> Coke is not the real thing, it's Pepsi. No. And so, so, you know, there's, uh, there's just things sometimes in our life we have to give up some stuff in order to experience new things, amen? And, and so I'm gonna, I want, you, I want to challenge you to decide, but I don't want you just to decide, okay? I want you to take and write yourself a note, okay? I'm going to give up for the next 21 days this, okay? And then I want you to put underneath of that, this is why, okay? I'm going to give it up because I want to be whatever, okay? I want to see God do something different in my life. I want to grow close. I want a better relationship with God. So, so when we talk about that, I want to add a little context to that, okay, if it's all right. Mark chapter 9, verses 28 and 29. And just a few weeks ago, we, we had talked about this, this, this portion of Scripture, and the disciples were trying to cast out a devil, and they couldn't do it. And so Jesus came to the rescue and cast this devil out, and, and, and this is the conversation after that event, okay? And... In verse Mark 9, 28, it says, And when he was coming to the house, his disciple asked him privately, because, you know, it's like we've already been humiliated publicly, so now we're going to go to him privately. Why could not we cast him out? Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. By, say that with me, by prayer and fasting so so uh you know one preacher one time said he said he said little prayer little power okay say that with me little prayer little power okay so so if we want power to flow the the power of god to really flow through our life we have to come to a place 
where we're willing to give up stuff in the flesh so that we can receive something in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Woo, that's good preaching right there. So fasting brings you to a place where you're, you, you understand that principle, okay? The principle of power. You know what we do? This is what we do. And I just say, I'll just say that I'm not really preaching yet, but I, I just say this. What we do as people, we look for leverage, right? And so we, we try to stick, stick a, a bar under something in our life and we begin to leverage uh, what I think I know about God against the circumstance in, the, in my life. And I leverage God and I say, God, yeah, your word says I'm more than a conqueror. And just because, you know, uh, <laughs> Sally Sue or whatever her name is, okay, ain't doing what she's supposed to be doing in my life. And so then we, we, we try to leverage the word of God against something that is never going to change when really maybe Sally Sue was there just to change me. Okay? God allows some stuff in our life to change us. And so, so, so I, I, fasting really brings me to the place where I can say to the strongholds in my life, Come on down, stronghold. Come on down. Come on, chain. Whatever holds us back, we, we say, come on, chain. It's time to break chains. Amen? And, and so that's what fasting does. Fasting brings us to a place uh, to, uh, of a release of power. So power will be released into your life when you surrender yourself enough for Him to move in your life. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> we got to embrace the one that holds the future. See, see, we got this struggle. I got this struggle. I, want, I believe God for this, okay? And then if God never brings me this, am I never going to be happy? The truth of it is, is that a lot of us, a lot of us go to church for a long time and, and because God never does this in my life, I'm never going to be happy because I, I always want, this is what it's going to look like, God. It's got to look like this, God. I've been believing for this for a long time. But what God is trying to do is something totally different with us. Something bigger, something greater, something way different than that. It's time to get serious. It's time to show up. It's time to be a disciple. That's what, that's what Jesus is looking for. He looked for somebody to follow him. He said, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I will teach you how to win souls for the kingdom of God. Amen? He didn't say he's good. He never said, he never said to Peter, Peter and James and John, he's, he didn't say, come follow me and I'll get you a brand new house. He never said that, did he? He said, he said come follow me and I'll, your bank account's going to get huge. He never said that. He said, come follow me and I'll, I'll give you a new car. He never said that. He said, I'll teach you how to go fishing for men. Amen? I'll go teach you how to, how to win a soul. Because that's, that's Jesus' mission statement, right? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's right. Amen. We got some word in the house. Somebody got some word in the house. But there's got to be a time in my life where I've got to lay down everything else and I got to say, you know what? I, I, I'm ready, God. <laughs> I'm finally ready. <laughs> I'm finally ready. Okay? It's time for me to recognize my need for God above everything else. I have to recognize that I, I need Him. Amen? Amen? That's what fasting does. Fasting teaches me to recognize that I need God. Amen? 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 So so what's important? I say that with a question. What's important to you? What is important to you? That's what I'm asking you. Because, because that's what the Spirit of God is asking you too. What is important? Amen? So, 21 days, uh, we, we, we turn the new year, and we like to give the first part of the year to the Lord for 21 days, okay? So, I want you to write down what it is you're going to give up, amen? I want you to write down uh, 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 why you're going to do it, okay? And then let's just see what God will do, amen? So, we're going to start the year off with 21 days, starting on the 7th of January through the 28th. So, it's three weeks, 21 days. And uh, uh, so you can, do, uh, you, can, you can do a fast of whatever it is, but it, uh, I, I, want, I want to say it needs to mean something to you, though, okay? It needs to mean something. So if you're going to give up uh, your favorite food or you're going to give up uh, uh, one day a week of complete fast, only water, or if you're going to give up uh, your Diet Coke for 21 days, you're going to give up uh, TV watching for 20 days, going to give up social media for 21 days, going to give up something, something, you're going to have to give up something 
and spend that time that you would normally spend doing whatever, spend it, give it to God, okay? And let's see what He'll do. Amen? And so if you have any questions about that, we can talk about that later. But uh, so that's, that's what we always do in January. We want to we wanna do a fast, a corporate fast where we all do. What would it be like, seriously, if we were all seeking God together at the same time? And we all came into the building uh, called the church, okay? And we really began to worship God all together at the same time on, this, on one accord. Uh, go to Acts chapter 2 and you could find out what, what it looked like. I'm going to tell you, it's going to look like something we ain't never experienced before. And God, God's presence will begin to move. Healings will happen. Uh, transformations of minds and hearts will happen. All kinds of different things will happen in your life. And I'm, I, I get excited just the thought of that. Amen. And so... so uh, 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 I'll, sh I'll shift off of that now. Uh, I kind of have a lot going on today, so, so bear with me a little bit because uh, about the time I get ready to preach, i got to shift, okay? So this, this, uh, every year uh, uh, towards the end of the year and going into the first part of the year, I always ask you to seek the Lord for a word for your life. And, and uh, God is always faithful. I'm, I'm, I get excited when uh, uh, several people will come up to me uh, usually about the second week or third, first, second week in, uh, in December and say, I got my word already. I'm like, yeah, you know, and then, and so we, we get a word and we write the word down and we put it somewhere prominent in our life might be in the mirror in the bathroom. Okay. Uh, when you get up in the morning, you might look at that word and say, you know what, that's, that's my word for the year. And then you begin to see God move in your life, uh, in that direction. And, uh, and then, and then I, I get tasked with, uh, not only to find a word for my own life, but to find a word for us as a body. And, uh, and so I, uh, I, I, was, I was really challenged uh, this year because I, I was like, you know, have you ever had like all kinds of different words and, and you worry about, is this the word God? Is that the word? And so I started praying and asking God. And it was the other day, uh, uh, I was just standing somewhere in the middle of a, a service and, I, and the Lord just kind of spoke to me in the spirit and I just knew that, the, that this was the word for our, us as a body. And uh, do you want to know what my word was? My word, I think I already said it, but my word is woo. W-O-O-O-O, -O 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 -O, you know, woo. -hoo. You want to you know why that's so uh, important for me? Because I get so uh, cumbered about with many things. I have lots of things that go on in my life, and I forget to celebrate the moments. I do. And so the Lord, Lord for my life, it's like woo. Just celebrate the moment, you know, like this now, this moment right now, this, this moment will never, ever be here again. Amen. Isn't that crazy? Like, like we just let those moments go by and we don't even think about what's going on. We don't even think like, well, you know, I'm mad right now. Okay, and I let something really precious just walk away because I was mad. I was mad. I was focused on something that happened 18 years ago in this now and I let it go by me because I was too worried about what was robbing me of my moment and so the Lord really work is working on me amen Woo! I'm gonna celebrate the moments Woo! so so I'm gonna work on that myself but for us as a as a as a as a body of Christ this is our word furthermore furthermore and I want to bring to you a scripture out of Hebrews 12 and verse 9 if you have your Bibles We'll open up our Bibles and read this together out loud. We, we like to read the Word of God together out loud. And so Hebrews 12, verse 9, uh, it's, uh, I'll read it from the King James Version. If you have another version, it's okay. Uh, we want to read the Word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? So, so we want to we read the Word of God together out loud, right? I actually challenge you when you read your Bible at home to read it out loud because you not only are you reading the Word of God, but you're also hearing it, Okay. And so if I get the word in my heart, if I get it down inside of me, then I know that it will come back out of me at some point in my life. So let's, let's look at Hebrews 12, verse 9. And it starts with the word furthermore, okay, in King James. And so let's read together. Ready? It's just one verse, really loud, with your, from your diaphragm. And say it, say it with me. Furthermore, we have had fathers in our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of lights and live? Let's just pray. Father, Lord, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for 
for all that you're doing, God, touch us right now. Open up our eyes, our ears, our hearts that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, furthermore, say that with me, furthermore. 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 So, so I, like, I like to break words up a little bit, and uh, I know that's really two words, but it's all together in one word, but uh, I, uh, further just means farther, okay? Can, can we go f- a little farther? <laughs> can we go a little farther? And uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, I, I like to use the word forward, because uh, if you focus forward, your life gets a little bit easier, okay? Because cause if we always focus backward, I once preached a message one time, uh, you can never uh, walk forward looking backwards because you'll end up falling down So because I can't see where I'm going. So I want to I wanna focus where I'm going. I want to focus on going further, all right? And then also I want to focus on more, amen? I believe that every relationship, every time we get in a rela- relationship with Jesus Christ, He wants to give you more. Say it with me, more more we need more of jesus right we want more of him in our life we want more of his love we want more of his word we want more of his spirit we want more of his provision we want more of his his love amen we want more of him in our life so as we proceed forward to more as we walk forward to more amen we we also must set our desire on moving forward amen and and sometimes sometimes i'm, I'm gonna tell you this right now we get stuck i i got a t-shirt with a, with a turtle upside down with his legs like this, uh, and, it, and it says underneath it's stuck. Because what happens in our life, we just get stuck, and we can't move forward. We can't move forward, we can't move backwards, we can't go side to side, but we need help, amen? So sometimes when we need help, uh, we, look for, we look for solutions, okay? But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the solution for your life. Uh, absent from regrets and, and guilt, uh, more... More is the question that needs to be answered in our life because we need to know that we want more. If we don't even know what more is, we don't even know what it looks like when we get it. And, and so we, we, look at, we look at where is God taking us and why is He taking us somewhere when we don't even really know what it is. So, so we get this reference uh, of, of a father, of an earthly father uh, in, this, in, this, in, the, in the text here. Uh, uh, and, and a father... A good father will always promote growth in your life, right? He's always going to stir something up in you. He's going to correct you. He's going to, you know, give you a spanking sometimes. He's going to teach you. He's going to guide you to, uh, because he believes that you can have more, that you can be more, right? He believes that you can be more than you, than you think you can be, right? He, he, he'll promote uh, uh, inner growth and strength in your life. Often, uh, <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, Joanne and I will be getting in an argument or something, and she'll say, you're just like your father. And I'll say to her, you're just like your mother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and it never goes uphill from there. <laughs> okay, but, 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 but often we find ourselves just like somebody that raised us, okay? And, and sometimes those are generational things that need to be broke off of our life, okay? Unless, of course, it's good looks, like my father was good looking. Okay, <laughs> okay? and so, so sometimes we have to begin to sort through things in our life. Amen? Can you say that with me? I want to sort through some stuff. Because sometimes we got to be willing to sort through, some, confront stuff in our life and really begin to say to my, myself, you know, like David did in the Psalms. He said, he said I, 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 gotta, I gotta encourage myself in the Lord. You know, I gotta, I gotta take the Word of God, I gotta take the truth of God into my life, and I gotta begin to really begin to pick apart some of the things that I believe are foundational in my life, and I gotta have them, and some of those things really need to go. And, and that's, what, that's what the relationship with God really looks like. It looks like taking stuff out of our life when he adds stuff into our life, okay? And so, so I, wanna, I, wanna have, I want God to have full and complete reign in my life, amen? I want him to have full, full authority in my life. Whatever is birthed in your life is a result of something, right? So, so sometimes when I was five years old, actually, I'll tell you a story. When I, when I was growing up, I was in the seventh grade, and uh, I was walking down the hallway at school, middle school. I was in that transition between, you know, I was a big man on the camp- campus in, in uh, elementary school, sixth grade, I was a straight-A student, and, uh, and the teacher, I was so smart that the teacher was like, 
you know, they let me do whatever. And so I got to walk around, you know, do whatever in, in, in elementary school because I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't challenged by the work. And so, so they, uh, I was like, to, you know, I go to the principal's office. I, they knew me by name. I could, I could do whatever. I, I was, uh, you know, they had a little store where all the kids went through at Christmas time to get stuff. I was the one that ran, ran the store. I was the one inside there. I, was, uh, I, I, they, I just had a full reign of that school. But then I got it transitioned uh, into, into this big school which is really small when I, when I go back and walk through it today. But I, I remember walking down the hallway when I was in seventh grade, because when I was in seventh grade, see, I was, I, my parents didn't, we didn't have no money when I was growing up. And so I always got my, my brother's hand-me-down clothes. And so uh, he was uh, five and a half years older than me, though. You know, so that the style, <laughs> the style would go out of place. You know, it's, it's like I was behind time, you know. And so I remember having this pair of jeans on. They were green. They, they were bell bottoms, you know them bell bottom jeans, and uh, I was walking. I was like, I was strutting myself down the hallway, and two girls walked out of the classroom, and they looked at me and they said, "What is he wearing?" <laughs> you know, and I, and and I, they didn't think I could hear them, but I heard them, and I was like, "These pants are what, what's wrong with my pants?" <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, but I never wore the pants again because <laughs> I learned something. Amen. I learned that what I was wearing was like five years out of style. Okay, but my dad didn't have enough money to buy me new pants. Okay, so I wore the same pair of pants every day for five days every day because I found one that kind of looked like it's okay. And didn't have them big, you know, and, 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 and I was able to get. But, but often in our life, we don't know what's got to go. Because we're so used to having what we have. And I think God is looking to change all of that in your life. As a good father would. Amen? A good father wants to change you. Amen? He don't want to leave you. He loves you so much. He don't want to leave you alone. And He brought you here to this, this day, this moment. And He said, right now, I want to, I want to teach you something. Something brand new in your life. I want to open up a new door for you. I want to, I want to, I want to speak into your life some word. Amen? Some, some new thing into your life. And all I want to say is just don't fight what God is doing. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Trag, tra, tragedy, uh, I can't say the word. Tragedy, tragedy and hardship leave us reeling and searching for answers. But I'm going to tell you, Jesus is the answer. For the world today and that's the easy thing to say but the truth is he really is the answer and he really wants to change your life going further is a decision to forge ahead into the unknown going further is a is a is a decision to that we have to take by faith knowing that whatever lies on the days in front of us we don't know what kind of you know what, what what's going to happen we don't know what's going to happen the, th the truth is is that you're really not in control anyways we, we really aren't in control. We, we think we're in control, but God is really the one who knows what holds, who, what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. You know, you know we don't even know, we, we don't know the day that we'll die. We don't know it. But we know that one day we will die. And, and, and can I, is it good enough to trust God that, that someday I'll be in heaven? See, see, is that what faith really is all about? And it doesn't let me give, give me keys to help me live my life today? Is that what this walk with God is about? Is it only about my future? See, if it's only about my future in heaven, then maybe we, Paul says it, he said, we of all people are the most miserable people. If, if we only have a hope for heaven and we don't have a hope for today, we're, we're miserable then because, I don't know, maybe if it was just me and you in this room, could we just admit to ourselves that maybe we're just a little bit miserable? Maybe, maybe it's just time that we really just admit to ourselves, look at so, ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what? I haven't really trusted God. I haven't really given Him my whole life. I am, I'm a little upset. I'm a little miserable, okay? <laughs> Blaming God for my circumstances when not allowing him to change me right is really just <laughs> trying to control god is that what we want to do we want to control god do you 
because that's what we do. I do it. I try to control God in circumstances and situations. I try to tell God all the reasons why he should bless me. I try to tell him all the reasons why you know, he should send that million dollars my way. I said, I said when, when, when is it going to come, God? When is it going to come? You know, and, and, and if it never comes, I still got to serve him anyways. I still got to trust him anyways. Oh, oh, you think it's easy, you know, for me to say that. It's not easy for me to say that because someone said they were going to give me a million dollars one time. My bills will be paid off, okay? That was like seven years ago. I thought, I thought I couldn't make it the next month without that money. Guess what? God is faithful every single month. God has always been faithful every single month. And you say, oh, Pastor Reverend, that's, 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 you know, it's just you. No, it's you too. All of us. All of us need to trust Him with everything. I'm not in control. God, I give you full control. I mean, if that was a statement we could say. I'm not in control. God, you're in control. I mean, next time you get down on your knees and you get ready to pray for something, why don't you say this? Start, start it out with this. God, you're in control. I'm not in control. I surrender my life. I surrender my mind. I surrender my will. I surrender my opinion on this matter to you. And I say, Father, just change me, change my heart. Help me to trust you more. <laughs> and then start to pray some more and see what happens to your life. Because see, we don't, we don't really want to give God everything. We don't really want to go further. We don't really want more of, of, of what we already have. Do we? I'm going to fast for that one. I, I'm a control freak. Maybe we should, maybe you should turn to your neighbor and just tell him to say, you're a control freak. <laughs> you know? Come on, that's the truth. We really do. We, we really do try to control God. Going, going further is not the same as moving forward. Going further is not the same as moving forward. Because we can just keep doing what we've always done and we're going to go further. But going forward is allowing God to change something. Amen? Amen. I could I wish I had a big clock set up here. Tick, 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 tick. Because time just keeps on ticking. It just keeps on ticking. And whether I'm happy or sad or excited or or living by faith, or trusting God or not. Tick, 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 tick. And I don't know, the older I get, the more I realize that tick, 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 tick. Time is really not here for God's purpose. It's really for me to understand that I have a limited resource of time. Tick, 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 tick. Can, can we just honor God with our life? <laughs> I almost, I almost, I can almost see God sometimes. This is just me. I'm letting you into my life a little bit. Sometimes when I'm in, in prayer with God, and I can see God almost leaning over to heaven and going like this. Are you mad, bro? <laughs> are, you, are you mad? Because <laughs> here's a God with all power, and we think he's not for me, but he really is for me. Amen? Truth is, uh, we, we value more we value more, this is the truth, we value more, but God places his measurement on will you go further with, my, with me. He's, he's measuring how far will I go with him? How much will, control will I give to him? How much will I trust him? See, <laughs> okay, this is a challenge. Just say I love you. Just say I love you. Okay, now, now if, if I, I, I'm just going to say this. I do this in the mirror uh, a lot, but I, I could say I love you to the mirror, okay? But, but when we say I love you, often we don't really mean it, okay? And so, uh, so aw, that's so sweet. <laughs> it's like, like when we first meet, you, you go, you know, I, I've had people come to me, I love you, Pastor. I love you. And I say, oh, thank you. I love you too. And then something goes on, right? See, I've been, I've, I just put in an analogy. I use Joanne all the time in my messages because, you know, she's my, my greatest resource of, uh, of, of teaching material. But she says, uh, she says, I say I love you to Joanne 
And she says, I love you to me. And it's not measured in the moment of I love you. It's measured in what we have gone through together and still say I love you. See, in 35 years of marriage, we've been, we fought a lot. Right? I don't remember any of the fights because I was always wrong every time. But I love you has more meaning today than it did when I was on, on September the 15th, uh, 1985, at 2 o'clock, when I knelt down in front of the, and I said, I love you. And they put help me on the back of my, on the bottom of my shoes. I didn't even know that was written on there. And you know what? I needed help. I didn't even know I needed help, but it, they wrote it on there. My brother did that for me. He, he blessed me with that, that prophetic statement. Okay, over our marriage. Help me. 19 years old. I said, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do me part. Sometimes she wants to kill me. Okay, sometimes I want to kill her. But I love you still means more today than it, does, it did then. I love you. And see, see, whether God does anything else in your life, he already said to you, I love you. Before you were ever born, He said, I love you enough to die for you. I give my life for you. And then all He asks in return is that you give your life back to Him. That's what love looks like when you're willing to lay something precious down so that you can receive something else. See, there's no risk in that though because God loves you Furthermore, furthermore, I'm almost done, okay? Mark 8, verse 34 through 38. I'll just kind of read this, this scripture to you just to add some context to what we're talking about. It says, and when, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Say that with me. Turn to your neighbor just so I can say, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Okay? Now, verse 35, and for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Say, say it with me, whosoever. There's, 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 there's no discrimination when it comes to whosoever, okay? All right? And so verse 36 says, what shall, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's a good question, right? Say that with me. That's a good question. In verse 37 it says, Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's a good question. So there's two declarations in this scripture and two questions, okay? Uh, <laughs> And the, the really, the answer is, the, the, the really, I'll just break it really down. It's like, what do you find value in? Things of the world or eternal things? That's what, that's what the question really, this, this scripture really asked me. It says, do I find value in the gift that Jesus gave me, in the relationship God wants to have with me? Do I find my most value there or do I find it here in things I can see, touch, or feel? Right here, out here. Like things I'm trying to get a hold of. Things I'm trying to, to gather for my own life. Whosoever, in verse 38 it says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words. And this is, this is where it gets a little ticklish. Because, you know, we, don't, we always like the Bible verses that say, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know, and stuff like that, because the Bible tells me so. And we all, we all, all the easy scriptures. But this one here is a hard scripture. Can, say, it, say it with me. This is hard. Say it, say it with me. This is hard. So verse 38, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me. And I, I can tell you right now, I have been ashamed of Jesus. I've been ashamed of the gospel. I've been ashamed of his word. I've been ashamed to stand up and say I'm a Christian. You know, when I'm standing in the bar, when I'm, when I'm standing in the middle of an argument somewhere, I've been ashamed to stand up for what God is standing for. Sometimes we've got to stand up and, and maybe argue for things. And sometimes we've got to say, you know what, I'm a Christian. Sometimes we've got to say no. But, but it says, whosoever there shall be therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. I just wonder if the Bible's even relevant anymore. 
I just wonder if the, the Bible's even relevant anymore because, you know, the truth of it is is that we are standing in the middle of an adulterous and sinful generation. Amen. We're standing in the middle of a, of a lot of people. You know what that word adulterous means? That means to say one thing and do another. That's what it means. It means I say I love you, but I don't really do it with my actions. I don't really love you with my actions. That's what that means. It means, it means I'm saying one thing and doing another. That, there's another word for that. It's called hypocrite. So we don't like those two words at all because it's too invasive. It's like, God, how come, how come you, can, you can't give me a good word? Because the word of God is invasive. It's going to come into your life, into your heart, into your mind, and work stuff out of you. Amen? Like a good father? Not like a good neighbor? Yes, we can see. We can see it. But we need to know it. I want to know the truth. Even if I don't like the way it feels. Amen? Amen? The thing is, is God knows the truth. We just think he doesn't. See, the, 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 I guess the thing is, is information and transformation are two different things. It's, it's, it's not okay just to take the word of God in, but never let it transform your life. That's, that's, not, that's not okay. That means that, that, that the power of God never touches me. The Word of God never touches my life. Because so, I, I never leave out of the church changed. And, and this is a building called a church, but this is a church. Know you not that you're the temple of the living God? Know you not that the Spirit of, God, of, the, of the living God lives inside of you? See, let that transformation happen every single place you go. Start at your home. Start there. Start it at your marriage. Start at your relationship with your kids. Start at, start at your, your, your workplace. Start, at, start at, at the way you think. Start to, con, to not control how you think, but begin to filter what you think through the filter. I take on the breastplate of righteousness, which is the filter by which I live my life. Jesus Christ. I, I am, there is nobody right. There's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. Right? And so when I get saved... I, I take on righteous. I'm made right with God, right? I have right standing with God. That, that's the filter, amen? Jesus comes to live in where? In my heart. He comes to live in my heart. Then I begin to live out of my heart what is in my heart, amen? Not hurt, pain, suffering, uh, lack, all that, not hopes, dreams, blah, 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 all that. Jesus now. Time to speak a better word. Time to speak a better word in your life. It's time to speak out a better word in your life. It's time, it's time to... <laughs> I'll just say it like this. Why are we here talking about there instead of living here what we have there? That's a big question for, a, for us. We want to make some noise for attention but we won't serve him quietly. You know, my, my aunt um, just passed away and uh, I have the pleasure of having uh, her, her Bible and uh, I, I was looking through her Bible and, uh, you know, towards the latter part of her, her uh, time, she, she had dementia and Alzheimer's and stuff and so she, she had a hard time communicating and I, I realized something really powerful about her is that she, she was living quietly, not looking for attention what we all look for attention for and won't even say a word about, you know, we, 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 she's just a quiet person who loved God. And you know, she touched lives of people all over the world through her giving. She just gave. She would, she would, she, she, the whole family was touched by her. Everybody in the family was touched by her. There's, I think, 13 generations of preachers she, she's a part of that, the legacy that, that she passed on, okay? Was, was, she was, she was the, one of the last remaining. I mean, Joanne's dad is, one of the, is the last remaining of that generation, okay? And 
there are 13 pastors or so that come through that line. And I'm like, there's, there's a lot there. And, and you can't tell me that God isn't faithful. You can't tell me that God doesn't have a plan. You can't tell me that it wasn't God, part of, part of God's plan for her life before she went to heaven was to spend the last 17 months, I mean, every, every day almost, 24-7, with us. She, she, she left in us a gift, a legacy that will live on. And it's not money, okay? She didn't give us money. What she did give us, though, was something better than money. There's something better than money. See, see, and I want to go furthermore into something better than money. I don't, I don't, the, the value of money is just the, just money. You can buy stuff with it, right? But I'm not, I don't worship stuff. I don't worship uh, things. I worship God and Him alone. You can't testify without a test. How do you know that what you're going through right now isn't just a test so that you can get the victory over it and then you can testify, look what the Lord has done. I can celebrate what God does. If, you never go, if, if, if God won't ever help you get over something or get through something or get around something, maybe you're serving the wrong God. I'm almost done, I promise. Ephesians 4, verse 17 says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth, henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Say that with me. In the vanity of their mind. Verse 18. Having their understanding darkened. Say that with me. Understanding darkened. And being alien from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being, say this with me, past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Verse 20, this really short verse, this, we can memorize it all, all together. It says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Say that with me. But ye have not so learned Christ. But ye have not so learned Christ. But ye have not so learned. It goes right back with my our text in, in, in Hebrews 12, 9, it says, it's, it's like a father teaches his kids, but ye have not so learned Christ. But ye have not so learned Christ. In my relationship with Christ, he better be teaching me something along the way. I better be learning something along the way, right? right? Otherwise, any, uh, any, what kind of God is that that doesn't teach you, teach you something? And so, now I'm going to keep reading verse 21. It says, if so be that you have heard him, if so be that you have heard him, all right, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. 22, that ye put off. <laughs> this is where it gets a little crazy because now God is going to say, I can't just be put off. I got to put off something. <laughs> okay, because that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to take something out of my life. He's trying to remove stuff from me. I, I don't want him to take anything away. I want him to give everything to me. See, put off, right? Uh, 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 concerning the former conversation, old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And verse, verse 23, it's a short verse again, all right? You ready? It's a short verse. We can, re we can do it and, and, and we can say it together. I'll say it first and we'll say it together. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There you got two verses. You have not so learned Christ I am I to be renewed in the spirit of, of my mind, right? And my mind, not your mind, my mind. And then in verse 24, it goes on. It says that you put off or put on. I'm sorry. So we're putting off something and we're putting on a new man, right? So which is after God, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I can't, I can't even preach a long time about this, but I can tell you this much. Holiness is a separation. It's like I was blind but now i i was lost but now i'm i come on and see see i was i was greedy selfish <laughs> but now i'm giving and loving i was i was angry but now i'm not 
Come on, I was something, but now I'm something else. And 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 I just wonder, I just wonder what your life would look like if if you weren't who you were all the time. And you really would be transformed, and you really would give God full control. What would happen? I just wonder. See, sometimes, sometimes we look for God to change everything, but we don't want to do nothing. We don't want to do nothing. And we're like, God, I don't understand why my life's always this way. <laughs> but you never do what he says. You know what Aunt Joyce told me? She, 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 I, I had some conversation. I always talk to her. You know, I, I'd go over there and I would tell her, I would say, I, she'd go, she'd be just looking at me like this, you know, and I'd say, I, I'd be working on a message or something. And, I, and so I, I said, I'm working on my message. And I said, I'm, what does this sound like? And I would say, I would say, da 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 And she'd go, that's right. Okay? <laughs> she was my best, my, my best parishioner because she listened to everything I said and she never talked back to me <laughs> in a bad way, you know, towards the end. But, but she, you know what she said to me? She said, she said to me, she said, I said, Aunt Joyce, what, what was your favorite thing to do when you were growing up? And she said, going to school. And I was like, well, why did you like to go to school so much? And she said, I thought she was going to say for the boys. <laughs> and she never said that for the boys. She said, I like to learn new things. And I was like, whoa. So I, so I wrote that down for this message today. It says, I'm, I want you to say it with me. I'm not afraid to learn new things. 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 I wonder if you could just walk around all week going like this. I'm not afraid to learn new things. I'm not afraid to, because that's what happens. We get afraid to do anything different. And, and I'm going to say, come on. It's 2021. Can I, can I just scream it to you? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I wish you could feel what I feel right now because I feel the Holy Ghost right now all up, inside of my, all up inside of me right now and I know He's doing something brand new in the earth today and I know that He called us here today to do something brand new in the world. Amen? God, God is not finished with us. He's just getting started with us. Amen? Amen. Furthermore, furthermore, Let's just set the expectation for 2021. Furthermore, is, is not believing that we are not going to have trials. I don't believe for one minute that there won't be another trial in 2021. I don't believe for one minute that there won't be some hurts in 2021. I don't believe it at all. I don't believe that there aren't going to be challenges and, ex and all the other things that go along with that. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be uh, trials. There's going to be moments of, of, of uh, I don't know what's going to go. There's going to be moments of fear. There's going to be moments where I'm going to feel like I'm in lack. There's going to be moments where I, maybe I'll feel like I have an abundance. Furthermore is not the expectation that I won't go through some stuff. The furthermore is the expectation that I set out right now in my heart and my mind and my spirit that says, God will be more than enough no matter what happens. No matter what comes my way. I'm going to go further and I'm going to expect more things to happen in my life. Whoo. See, we have to be willing to release what's behind us. Not forgetting. Letting, letting the God of justice rule in your life does not mean that everything in the past is going to be okay. It means I release the power of it over my life to determine my next move. Amen? I release all of that because I trust that God is the God of justice. And whatever He brings... You know what, you know what God's done to me? And I'll just be honest with you a couple, a couple minutes. Sometimes when, when someone hurts me, I expect lightning bolt to come from heaven strike them on the forehead and knock them clean off the earth, okay? That would be justice. But sometimes God blesses them instead. And I look back and I go, God, why'd you bless them? What about me? And then I begin to focus on that and I'm like, come on, come on, God, what you doing? And, then, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I go on, on for days and months and years and 
And I forget about God, God might bless them. He might do whatever. But God is the God of justice. He weighs in the balance. And how do, you, how do I know that God isn't trying to do something in me? That this is the only way it could happen. I don't like that, though, because, you know, I don't really want to be in control of everything and what happens. And I don't really want to release what's behind me. So I really don't want God to really have full reign in my life. I really don't want to be like Christ who sat on a cross and before he died, he said, Father, forgive them for they know that. That wasn't just a word that he spoke. That was his heart. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do and I'm going to give them life anyways and life more abundantly and I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, about, to, I'm about to pass away and I'm going to come back and sit on the throne of their heart. Maybe... I trust you with the situation, God. See, when I can come through that doorway, just like we walked into 2021, it's a new doorway, it's a new opportunity, it's a new hope, it's a new dream. When I can really walk through that doorway, I actually am winning my life back. I, I, I win back my power, I win back my strength, I win back my hope, I, I, I win back my relationship with God because He's a loving and forgiving God. Thank God for His long-suffering in my life. And if I could just go through the doorway, I could win back my life and God could use me again. God could, God, I could be free from the weight of things that hold me back and hold me down and I could, I could walk into a new year fully transformed and fully believing that God is going to do it in my life. He's going to do it. A wise preacher once said this. He said four things. I'm going to give them to you. And then I'll be done. I'll, I'll be quiet. But it says, remember that there is nothing that can happen to you that has not happened to millions of other people. Remind yourself that as a human being, you run the risk of this kind of thing happening. We are going to be hurt, but our hurts will pass. Some of our dreams will be shattered while others will happen. Remember, there are people who became great facing what you now must face. Say this, I don't know how I'm going to handle this, but I can. Philippians 4, verse 19 says, but my God shall supply all my need. All your need, it actually says. Paul is speaking to us. He says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My needs. <laughs> my needs. Whether or they're perceived or actual needs will be supplied. All of them will be supplied by Jesus Christ. God will supply through Jesus Christ all my need. Amen? Amen? So let's just do this. I'm gonna, if you would stand with me. I'm just going to pray and I'll be done. Man, I feel that. Woo! Just imagine, if you will, you know the things that keep you held back. You know the circumstance. You know the, the thing, whatever it is. I just want you to like place it in your hands, just in your mind's eye, just put it in your hands. And, and let's just pray. Father, I believe your word. It says you will supply all my need according to, according to your riches and mercy <laughs> through Christ Jesus. And I thank you right now that this thing, this circumstance, this challenge is placed in my hands for your glory and for your honor. And Father, right now, I release it to you. I give it to you. I trust you with it. 
I lay it down at your feet. I break the hold of it off of my life. I, I, re, I release all, this, all, the, all the circumstances. And I declare that I am above it. I am not beneath it. I am over it. I am not under it. I am going to go around it or I'm going to go through it. Either way, up or down, it's your name, Father. And I trust you right now with my life. I will go further. I will go forward for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's praise him. Come on. I worship you, Lord, Lord, because you are my supply. Father, <laughs> no deposit, no return. And so, Father, when you put a deposit in me, Father, I draw upon it right now in the spirit realm, and I push back the desire of the enemy to destroy, to kill, to, to steal, to take from your people. And I, I demand right now, Father, in Jesus' name, that your spirit would come and walk before us and behind us, above us, beneath us, all around us, Father, so that our life would never be the same, God. As we walk, Father, as we go, Father, as we're healed on the way, Father, Lord, that we would, we would be transformed in our spirit and that our mind would go, Whoo! what happened, what happened? It's the spirit of God. And so, Father, while we're open, Father, I pray that you come right now and fill us with the Holy Spirit right now. Empower your people, Father. Lord, not to walk around weak and lame and, and, and disgusted and angry and upset and afraid, Lord. But we would walk, Father, in power. We would walk with a mighty God, Lord. That we would walk, Lord, not weak, not sickly, Lord, but we would walk with strength. Father, there's a work that needs to be done in the earth yet. Father, I believe that there is faith in this house. There is, this is a people who, who believes God for many great things. And so, Father, right now we declare the kingdom of God has come into this room, into this heart, into this life, into these situations, and we push back his, the power of the devil, the power of the enemy, we push him back right now in Jesus' name. And we declare that there is only one God in heaven who lives in this earth. He lives in us. Let the God, let the real God rise up. Amen. Let him rise up in our life. Let him rise up in our heart. Let him rise up in our situation. Let him rise up in our walk, in our, in our attitudes, in our minds, in our fasting time, in our prayer time, in our reading time, in our worship time, in our comings and in our goings. Let him rise up, Father, and we take every lesson, Lord, that you have taught us. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that failed relationship. Thank you for the bankruptcy. Thank you for that feeling of lack. Thank you for, thank you for the, the bad attitude people get. Thank you for the, 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 the feeling of, uh, of, of nothingness. Thank you for the, those, those situations, Lord, that I don't understand, that I'll never understand. Thank you, Lord, for taking away from me, Lord, what I, what I so desperately wanted to have. Thank you, Lord, for changing me, Lord. Thank you for, for raising me up, Lord. I just give you my life. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. I, want, I, I just challenge you. I'm going to open an altar up. This is old-time altar service right here. But wherever you are, find an altar. If you're at home, you're, get by your couch. I just want you to get on your knees, and I just want you to give him 2021. I want, him, I want you to give your life to him now. 
Don't wait till tomorrow. Take, take a moment right now in the presence of the Lord. He's here right now. He's here like never before. He's here right now. And he wants to change everything in your life. But I want you to just take a moment right now, wherever you are, and let's just pray together, okay? You pray by yourself. I'm not going to pray for you no more. I just want you to pray. I want you to tell God something. I want you to tell him, though, just use the word, furthermore. 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 Furthermore, God. Furthermore. Furthermore.